Hello everyone, my name is Queenie and today I want to talk about some game design stuff I think Palea desperately needs to fix. I just want to preface this video with that I adore Palea and I want to see it succeed just like everyone else in the community. And I totally understand that the game is currently in beta, which means there is likely a lot of development still to go and things generally take time, but we still have to address the giant choppa in the room. And I'm not talking about the very obvious and frustrating bugs like randomly getting stuck on cliffs all the time and stuff like that, because those will surely be squashed eventually no matter what. But I want to talk specifically about things that are currently designed in a way that to me doesn't help at the best of times and makes the game actively worse and unfun at the worst of times. First off, quests and the most recent Maji Market stamp card system. The fact that we can only track three quests is a bit of a pain as the Norman MMOs are usually five, but we can get over that if it wasn't for the quest interface being so lackluster. You have to manually unpin a quest to make space for another instead of just being able to pin the new quest you want to track and it automatically replacing the oldest tracked quest on the list. Then we have the quest information itself. It's a huge missed opportunity that we can't see the dialogue and context of the quests, just a snippet of what we need to do. It feels super detached and in every MMORPG I play, I frequently go back to check why I was gathering one thing or another because I simply forget while I'm busy doing something else. It's a small thing, I know, but to me it would go a long way to help build that connection with the characters in the world of Palea in general. Something that's especially egregious for bad information is the Magi Market event stamp cards. For example, they have two activities tracked where you need to eat savory or sweet food items. However, there is no way to track which specific food items you've already eaten or which ones you're missing. I've already wasted money buying and eating stuff that I've already completed because I couldn't remember if I'd already done it or not and bought it just in case. You'd think the little magnifying glass would contain this information, but no, it basically just repeats what's already written. It's an extremely odd and unhelpful choice. And it just makes things more difficult. But let's move on to the fast traveling system. First off, the stable posts desperately needs an actual map to show where you're teleporting to when you're interacting with it. Having to leave the stable menu to cross-reference your map constantly is very tedious. There should also be a stable point right outside or on your housing plot so you can at least go to the main hubs easily. The current fast traveling system is very clunky to the point where many times I personally don't even bother to use it because the nodes are either too far away from places I want to go or I'm at, or it costs too much gold, especially early on. Some might say, but Queenie, it's so you can explore and gather resources on the way. And sure, that would be super valid if your backpack wasn't so tiny for a very long time since money is slow when you start out. So when you gather a lot of different resources, you run out of space so fast you basically have to head home or go to Ziki's store after about 5 minutes to make space again. And now we're back where we started. Speaking of bag space, why does our ammo take up space in the regular bag? Why do we not have a separate ammo pouch? Because if you want to have the ammo necessary to catch bugs, hunt, and the consumables to keep your focus, up, a ton of inventory slots will be taken up by just ammo and food, further exacerbating the bag space problem. Oh, and we also can't sort anything in any of our inventories at all, which is a total pain in the back. And in a similar vein, the game needs a minimap. Please, for the love of Choppa's, implement a minimap. I understand the compass is a lot more streamlined visually, but a minimap would make traveling around so much easier. You could even make it a toggleable setting so people who prefer the compass can keep it, or you can have the minimap, or a combination of both, or neither for the mad lads. I just don't understand why we don't even have the choice, because bringing up the regular map constantly is so disruptive. But let's move on to gardening. The crop growing seems a little inconsistent with the general theme of the game at the moment. Like, Palea is a cozy MMO designed around taking your time and taking breaks, so it makes sense that you can log out and some of the in-game stuff progresses, like building your house for example. You would think that crops would be one of those things that progresses while offline too, but for some reason they don't, and I can't understand the purpose of preventing that. It's also not explained in-game that your crops doesn't grow at all while you're offline, except for finishing the tick of the Paleon day you logged out during. And since the game provides you with crop bonuses like water retention and weed prevention, 
That would make you think that, ah, if I use these bonuses, my crops will be able to grow while I'm doing something else, which is half true. It does for as long as you're online. Your crops should absolutely grow while you're offline. There's literally no good reason for them not to. Assuming, of course, you've got it water retention and weed prevented, so growth isn't hindered due to that. Because it feels silly to have these crop bonuses and fertilizer features existing and available, but then make it so the crops only grow while you're online. It disproportionately punishes people who can't play for several hours a day, and it's very uncozy, in my opinion. And on a sort of related note, we also need more ways to earn the profession tokens you get after hitting level 10. Like, either we'd need more weeklies, or they need to implement dailies, or monthlies, or something similar as well. Because at its current rate, it's frustratingly slow. But anyways, let's switch it up and talk fashion. First of all, we have no shoes clothing slot. It's built into the pants slot, which is an interesting choice. There is currently no way to make, buy, or earn new clothes unless you pay for it with real-life money. And apparently that is unlikely to change, and free-to-play players will likely only have the basic character creation clothing to use if the questions and answers section of the official Paleo Discord is to be believed. This is also a notion that's further reinforced by Singularity6 completely ignoring any and all questions regarding this topic in their recent AMA. This is an incredible letdown for me personally, and I'm sure for many others, because I get that the game needs to make money. I 100% agree and support that, but neglecting your free players and making it so a huge feature of the game is entirely paywalled will hurt long term. Because those free to play players might have turned into paying players down the line, but instead, you're likely just making them quit the game instead if clothing options is important to them. And for a lot of us, it is. That way, you're ensuring that they never becoming paying players at all because they will just go to a different game. Especially in an MMO, there needs to be things you can earn for your character from the game itself self or else what is the fun of playing? The logic here doesn't really make sense to me. Just make the paid options have more customizations or generally cooler stuff. It would still be worth paying for things like that for many people, myself included, alongside also being able to earn free outfits, like getting a cute farmer outfit when you hit level 10 gardening or something. Doing it this way instead, where all new clothing is paywalled forever, makes it feel more like a cash grab than a cozy MMO, which just feels bad. There have been many successful and profitable games where you can earn new items and clothing for free alongside a thriving cash shop of even cooler cosmetics, so it's not like there aren't any precedents of that working well. And as a side note for the cash shop, why can't we preview what the premium clothes would look like on our character via our wardrobe? Seems like an oversight. And speaking of MMO, the only things you can do with multiple players that's actually beneficial and that doesn't risk ruining the fun of others is flow trees and cooking, which is very odd for a game marketed as an MMO. Like, take fishing for example. Sure, you get this tiny buff that reduces the hook time if you fish near others, but why can't there also be a bonus to finding star quality fish or rare fish, for example, so that there's a noticeable benefit to playing with others? Same with hunting. If you're in a hunting party, why don't you get resources from every kill everyone makes automatically, since almost everything is one shot, one kill once you get bronze arrows, which is very early on in the game. Currently, even when you try, you can't really cooperate on anything hunting-wise except Elder Cernux, I guess, for like three shots, or the super rare Magic Cernuk and Chapa. Multiple activities are actively worse if you play with others right now, which I really, really hope they change. Many Tasks also has a weirdly competitive nature that doesn't really fit in a cozy game, in my opinion. Like, like all of the resources that disappears for other players once you mine, hunt, or gather them. Palium is especially terrible for this, since even if you try to share it with others, there are only a limited number of hits to fully mine a node, meaning only a limited amount of players can participate even when you try to share. They should work like flow trees at the very least to encourage collaboration, but hey, here we are. Not to mention that I think resources in general should be personal nodes. Even if I mine something, it doesn't remove that resource entirely for every other player until it respawns. Instead, to encourage playing together with others, you should get extra resources if you gather with others. Like, make it worthwhile to group up. 
Which brings me to another extremely frustrating part of the game where you try to be a good sport and call out rare resources like a big Paleum node or flow trees, but there is no way to actually share a pinpoint location in the chat to help people find you and the node, which means you could be sat waiting for ages while people try and find you, and if you're super unlucky with Paleum, some random player will just then run by and mine the entire node while you're sat waiting for others before they arrive, and everyone that arrives will arrive to disappoint it's just an incredibly frustrating design and I think the issues around the resource nodes especially needs to get improved in order for people not to start getting toxic to each other. For a cozy and wholesome MMO, I've seen full-on arguments break out over rare resource nodes multiple times in their server chat and it's just not the vibe. A nice feature they could add when calling out rare resources would be that if you send out the location ping that will hopefully exist at some point, people in the relevant map could get a pop-up to opt in, saying something like, I'm on my way, or no thanks, and it would form a temporary gathering group of everyone who wants to participate, so you can then see when everyone has reached the node that you're waiting to share. It would make it so much easier for players to know how many are still trying to reach the node, since a temporary party would also show people's location on the map. Either way, the game's current state of group farming, where some nodes needs other players like flow trees, and some being actively worse with other players like Paleum, makes it so both the solo player and group player experiences are less fun and more frustrating. Which brings me to the recent Magi Market minigame, The Chapa Chase. This is first and foremost a cozy game, right? And I think we all thought that, oh hey, we'll get extra tickets when we participate if we all gather more Chapas in total which would make total sense, but no. You only gain tickets for the specific choppas you yourself bring in, which makes this incredibly frustrating and competitive and not cooperative at all. In fact, playing together is worse because it means you get less tickets since there's only a set amount of choppas spawning. Not to mention that a lot of the extra bonus tickets in the stamp card are linked to playing in a group. And then my question is, why isn't there an automatic temporary group that forms, similar to Guild Wars 2 for example, when you join into an event like this? It could be as simple as a pop-up asking if you wish to join the proximity group. Which could also work really well for things like hunting the rare beasts, flow trees, or anything else group related too. I'm a person that loves competitive games, so I don't mind that things are competitive in nature, but you gotta take the game's context into consideration. This choppa chase is definitely not it, but something that could have worked great, while slightly more on the competitive side, would have been a community cooking or gathering challenge, where you, for example, could get tasked to make as many star quality blueberry pies, or gather as much flint as possible in a limited amount of time where each person can hand in what you cook or gather, and then it tallies up how many things were contributed in total across the game. Sort of like the Planet Zoo community challenges, where everyone in the community bands together to, for example, release 100,000 giraffes into the wild or breed 50,000 lions. And the more you personally contribute, the more rewards you get, but even just participating is still valuable. You could add in top contributor leaderboards and such too, and it would be a way more community-driven and cooperative, while slightly competitive event. But it would fit much better into the game's identity in comparison to the Chapa Chase. So with the Chapa Chase, why isn't it cooperative in the slightest? Like, why aren't we getting more tickets based on how many choppas we've captured in total? It just doesn't make sense to me. And lastly, we get to the economy. Like, first of all, what economy? There is no player-to-player -player trading, only a very limited gifting system via requests. So why is everything priced so astronomically in-game, combined with this arbitrary gold cap at 300k and the very limited storage pace? Like, the last storage upgrade cost a crazy amount of gold, so when we get that, why don't we get an unlimited or close to unlimited storage space on our personal plots? What's the reasoning? And with no player-to-player -player trading, what is the reason for the gold cap? To whose benefit? It seems so arbitrary and pointless. We also can't disassemble or sell furniture pieces, which doesn't make a lot of sense either, but at least those don't take up storage space, so we know the storage base can be solved, they've just opted into hamstringing us for no reason. I can accept limited storage space at the start to incentivize buying the upgrades, but after the final giant cost upgrade? Why are we still limited after that? I'm so confused around what the actual benefit of these very arbitrary caps are because some people are already maxed out on gold, storage space, housing plots, you name it. What's the incentive for those players to keep playing? 
You can't even chill and fish or hunt bugs because you have nowhere to store them and you can't sell them because you won't get any gold either. It just becomes a massive waste of time to do anything in the game at that point, except talk to villagers, but if you've got all the relationships maxed too, well, I guess it's time to play something else. I also want to mention crafting a little bit, because I'm not sure there is ever a time where crafting your raw materials into something else is more profitable than just selling the materials. Except for the infamous cake parties, of course. I feel like the more time it takes to refine a product, the more it should sell for, because right now there is little to no incentive to craft anything other than stuff for achievements, decorating your house, or cooking some basics to keep your focus up, or the odd gifts for villagers. Which, once you've done most of those things, the only thing left is just crafting food every few days so you have enough to keep your focus up or ammo, but it's not exactly super engaging. I don't know guys, a lot of the current design choices feel very uncozy and somewhat illogical for the game and its genre, and I really really hope Singularity 6 rightens the ship because Paleo has the potential to be one of the best cozy games on the market for a very long time, but anyways, let me know your thoughts below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!